Then we see the candidates, this time their skydiving eggsy comforts a terrified Roxy. Merlin is given the task of landing on a target without radar detection. Roxy is still shook, so Charlie takes the lead. Before Roxy jumps, he offers one final bit of encouragement and says, follow me, and with that, she finally jumps, but before everyone gets too comfortable, Merlin reminds them that this is Kingsman. He says, what would you do when one of your groups has no parachute? And he laughs. The panic group starts pairing up, but one of them chickens out. They regroup, planning to share their parachute with the one who doesn't have one. One by one, those with shoots exit the formation. It comes down to just Eggsy and Roxy. As Merlin watches on with bated breath, Eggsy pulls on Roxy's parachute and anxiously grabs hold as he's the odd man out. Fortunately, they both survive and even land on the mark. Roxy and Charlie remain, they're dismissed, but Eggsy confronts Merlin for not giving him the parachute. Am I the expendable candidate? Merlin replies, you need to take that chap off your shoulder. That night Harry attends Valentine's Gala, and it turns out Valentine cancelled the entire gala because of how much money Harry had donated. Gazelle walks in the room with the food, and the two prepare themselves for some McDonald's. Harry speaks to Valentine about climate change and then mentions Professor Arnold. Valentine asks him if he likes spy movies, and the two make jokes as they both know who they are. After dinner, Valentine thanks him for coming, then tells Gazelle that he planted a Nana tracking device in Harry's drink, but Harry also got information that Valentine is in connection with a church group, and Arthur informs Harry about the missing princess. Valentine, though, speaks to the Scandinavian princess, who refuses to agree to his terms. It seems there's hundreds of celebrities and dignitaries that are being locked up under his care. On the news, we see that Valentine's free SIM cards are successfully making it out to the public, including Eggie's mom. Then Merlin interrupts the remaining candidates with the mission to attend a party and win over the person in their respective photos. Eggsy is excited, and he says posh girls love a bit of rough. Charlie says we'll see about that, they all have the same target at the party, and they all try their luck. Charlie takes the lead, but Roxy exposes his lackluster, nagging strategy. Meanwhile, Eggsy pulls up with the drip, but the other two dismiss it as another tactic. Suddenly, a waiter interjects and catches their target's attention. He says to Lady, there's a phone call for you at reception. Then he gives the gang a dating tip, rehypno or even something stronger. They all pass out. Eggsy awakens, tied up on train tracks. As a train approaches, the man wants to know what the Kingsman is. Eggsy remains silent. As the train runs past him, he opens his eyes to see it was all a test. He and Roxy passed this test. Charlie is up next. They watch Charlie take his test, but he refuses to die for the Kingsmen. When he fails, Arthur is furious and disappointed, and he is sent home. We're back with the others. Merlin congratulates their mentors back in with Valentine. He's uploading his handprint for his security system, no doubt part of his huge plan. He says this should only be operated by a stable genius like me, and it seems like this suitcase will be part of an experiment at the church. Meanwhile, Eggsy is taken shopping. Harry wants to give him a bulletproof gentleman's suit, but he takes him to fitting room 3, a massive arsenal of weapons, which include shoes that are weapons, umbrellas, weapons, and even pistol shotguns, and let's not forget poison pens or taser rings. But as the duo exits, they find Valentine buying a suit of his own. He and Harry talk sarcastically with each other until Valentine leaves, but Harry places a hidden speaker on Valentine, and Arthur wants to speak with Eggsy. He hands him a gun and says to shoot his dog, as Merlin does the same to Roxy. Eggsy aims the gun Eggsy fails to do so, but a gunshot can be heard from Roxy. Arthur sends Eggsy home. Eggsy takes Arthur's car and drives back home, and Roxy is officially named Lancelot. Back at home, disappointed, Eggsy hugs his mother, but then sees she has a black eye. Furious, he goes by the pub to find Dean. Eggsy is set to fight him until the car drives itself to Harry's place. 
he fails to avenge his mother. He is disappointed with Eggsy for failing his test. Harry says you chose a dog over being a spy. Eggsy replies, did you? He says yes. Harry shows him Mr. Pickle stuffed in the bathroom, his dog, and reveals that the gun had a blank in it. He also reveals that Amelia never drowned and that she works with the Kingsman in Berlin. Then he says Kingsman only condones the risk of a life to save another. Merlin interrupts the two and alerts Harry to Valentine's current activities. He can be heard proudly announcing that they're ready to test their plans in the church that Harry identified earlier. Eggsy apologizes for loving dogs as Harry leaves for his mission. Harry goes to Kentucky to the hate group church. As he sits and overhears the nasty sermon from the bigoted leader, Harry starts to head to the door. From a few thousand feet away, Valentine and Gazelle sit to activate the signal on the phones in the church from the people who have Valentine SIM cards. The signal goes live and causes everyone, including Harry, to go into a violent rage and start attacking each other. Harry shoots several people in the head, as well as stabbing, bludgeoning, impaling, and blowing up anyone that tries to attack him. until he is the only survivor. Eggsy, Merlin, and Arthur watch from their respective locations. Outside, Harry finds Valentine and Gazelle waiting for him. Harry asks, what did you do to me? I had no control. Valentine explains that the signal from the SIM cards triggers aggression and represses inhibitors. He then takes out a gun and shoots Harry in the head, killing him. Eggsy screams in horror, while Valentine is appalled at having killed someone. Meanwhile, Eggsy calms himself with a little drink before heading back to Kingsman. There, he meets with Arthur. He mentions that Harry had recorded Valentine's confession and pours a drink in Harry's honor when Eggsy notices that Arthur has an implant scar under his ear. Eggsy distracted him. Arthur toasts to Harry, and he and Eggsy drink. Arthur was swayed by Valentine when he proposed his plan of mass genocide because he thinks that mankind is a virus on the planet and wiping them out would be beneficial, so he has tried to convince all world leaders to join him in his plan. Arthur then takes out his pen to activate the poison that he put in Eggsy's drink, only to find himself dying. Eggsy switched the drinks by distracting Arthur moments earlier by asking him if the paintings on the wall were of former Kingsmen. Arthur dies on the table. Eggsy gets the pen and rips out the microchip, and V-Day starts in six hours. Merlin is told what just happened, and he says that the three of them will conduct the mission on their own. They jump in a private plane, and Merlin explains to them that the plan is to break one of Valentine's satellites, which should buy them the time needed to hack into the mainframe, and Merlin can shut it down at the so-called safe house. Valentine has a perfect defense system in place. Roxy suits up with her balloons, these balloons will help her reach the edge of the atmosphere high enough to fire a missile into Valentine's satellite. Before she takes off, Eggsy comforts her as she's still terrified of heights. The plane takes off, and Roxy will use Arthur's invitation. Valentine then gives a motivational speech, saying they should honor the people's deaths today by celebrating that today is a historic day, and pretty much telling everyone there that they are the chosen people. Eggsy puts on his custom-made suit Harry had made for him and is ready to go. As they approach the base, they receive permission to land, and they immediately see the danger. Merlin lands the plane, Eggsy exits, and he hands the woman Arthur's ticket, which she accepts after scanning him, is escorted into the main hall, and the plane is taken to a lower level. With only 18 minutes to go, he needs to get to the control room, and Roxy is almost about to fire the missile away. Eggsy then knocks out the Scandinavian Prime Minister, jumps on his laptop, and gets Merlin inside the system. One of Roxy's balloons pops before she shoots the missile, and Charlie appears, holds Eggsy at knife point, and calls out to Valentine, but then receives an electric shock. Roxy shoots the missile away, and her other balloon pops. Valentine changes the countdown to only two minutes away, and Merlin gets the plane ready while directing Eggsy on where to go. 
Roxy drops herself down to the ground, and now that there's only one minute left, Eggsy shoots at Will as he heads to the plane and shows off some acrobatic. With only five seconds to go, the missile hits the satellite, which stops the countdown. Roxy gets back safely, and Merlin discovers the biometric lock and immediately runs outside to save Eggsy from getting killed. Merlin says he needs to make sure Valentine's hands don't touch his computer and gives Eggsy a sweet amount of guns to choose from, but he grabs an umbrella, and Valentine decides to call his friend with a nearby satellite, asking if he could piggyback off it. Merlin sees this and alerts Eggsy to it, and the army is approaching him. Eggsy gets to work and takes out the first bunch of enemies, but a sniper rifle causes him to throw a grenade and continue through the base problematically. Though they corner him and have men on both sides. Merlin has his own problems, though, so Eggsy tells Roxy to call his mother and tell her to hide herself. Eggsy then gets an idea and tells Merlin to activate the solder chips. Merlin jumps on the system and begins hacking it, and Valentine is having a heart attack as he cannot stop it. Then boom, all the guards trying to kill Merlin die. All the guards trying to kill Eggsy die. All those snobs who ran off and left the world to die all die in a beautiful display of fireworks. Eggsy starts celebrating but gets interrupted by Princess Tilda. If I get you out, will you give me a kiss? Princess says I'll give you more than just a kiss. Valentine then jumps on the speakers and says he didn't put a chip in his head, and all those died for no reason as they could not even stop him. Roxy tells Michelle to lock her baby in the bathroom and throw away the key, then Valentine activates it. All the phones around the world begin turning on which is an absolute mess with hundreds killing each other and Michelle trying to get to her baby as well. Eggsy walks towards the control room and fires, which stops the Sims from activating Gazelle say she'll handle him and jump out the window and shoot. The two get into a fight with each other, and Valentine starts the killing again. Football fields are death zones, and as the music blares, the two still fight with each other in a very weird way, but Eggsy decides enough is enough. People are dying by the thousands, and Eggsy uses whatever he can to kill his opponent. Eventually, they both jump in the air, and Eggsy activates his shoes and cuts Gazelle. This lethal poison quickly spreads and is enough to make her drop dead. The world is in havoc, though and Merlin tells Eggsy to kill Valentine, so he uses the prosthetic leg of Gazelle as a javelin and stops the killing around the world. Valentine vomits at the sight of his blood and drops Roxy cheers, and so does Merlin. Michelle cradles her baby, saying sorry, and Merlin tells Eggsy that Harry would be proud of him. It seems Valentine is still alive and talking about spy movies, but as Valentine said to Harry, Eggsy said the same to him and said this isn't. Merlin and Roxy congratulated Eggsy for saving the world. He proceeds to grab a bottle of champagne with two glasses and goes to Tilda's cell to have anal sex with her, which prompts Merlin to turn off his video monitor. The initial credits begin, until it cuts to Michelle and Dean in the pub. Eggsy enters, dressed in a fine suit. He tells Michelle that his new job has given him benefits, including a new home for him, Michelle, and his sister to live in, away from Dean. Dean goes to bully Eggsy again with his goons. Eggsy goes to lock the front door and say what Harry once said, manners make the man. He grabs a glass with the umbrella hook and throws it at Dean's face. 